Michael Nagy here with Jiggy Jag TV and DiscoveringBands.com. And for everyone watching, for Trish's video on my channel, I'm helping support the awesome bands that I feature. And today I'm here with the God Bombs. How are you doing today? Amazing. We were just recording some new music here in the home studio. Awesome. Well, it's great to have you back. From the last time we talked, like six months ago, you got an amazing new video and single out. So you want to start off and tell us about that? Yeah, uh, Black and Yellow is the first single and the first music video from our upcoming project called Godhead. And the song is about how uh, we hate corporate America and how it bleeds people with their creativity. And um, we're just supporting art and supporting people to be individuals and not feel like they have to be trapped inside of like a hive system where they feel suffocated and they can't express themselves creatively. And is that going to be a common theme for the new album, kind of? Yeah, I think the album in general really touches on different aspects of society. Uh, the video was a collaboration with Jason Kaplan, who is a director that we've worked with on several previous <laughs> videos. And the song, actually, uh, West, uh, West Rosen here, the new bassist, came up with the original riff of the song. And he actually kind of came up with the uh, original concept. You want to talk about it? Oh, hey, yeah, I came in with this riff, and uh, our mutual friend Chris Lorraine was here and did the lead guitar parts, and then uh, we met with filmmaker Jason Kaplan, who had filmed his video for Simulation on the last album, and uh, we came up with the video, the, the four of us, yeah. <clears throat> now, it has a very Marilyn Manson vibe and sound to it. Were you going for that, or did it just happen like that? I think it happened naturally because the bass lines that Wes came up with were kind of reminiscent almost of like early Spooky Kids era, Marilyn Manson, and um, you know, Chris Lorraine was here and we recorded the song on a full moon. And I don't know if you know, but I actually used to work with uh, the original guitarist from Manson, Daisy Berkowitz, before he passed away. So I felt like personally the ghost of Daisy was in the room with us and we had these like bluesy, crazy lead guitar kind of thing, like almost a Daisy Berkowitz kind of style that came in. And uh, yeah, it just, you know, it really kind of just clicked and we really recorded the whole thing pretty much in one night. And then later on, a producer named Kiyoki, who we're working with, kind of took what we did and added some new elements to it to make it a little bit different. And I love how it all just came together really organically. And the video, I really like the uh, artistic visuals in it. I like how it's put together. Thank you. Yeah, Anya here is the new guitarist, and she was the ice queen in the video. Do you have any thoughts about it? Uh, yeah, you know, I mean, the video, we're just trying to challenge thoughts of, uh, you know, uh, the, what kind of value system we're putting out in the world. So, you know, we just hope that uh, we can challenge, like, capitalism and, like, what is important, what is valuable in the world. Yeah, yeah. to me, music is spirituality. And music is everything. So, you know, we just want to express ourselves through our music. And let people know that they don't have to just exist in a system where the only value that's present is like how much money you make or, you know, how, what nice car you have or whatever, you know, there's, there's things outside of that. And we just want to reach people with our music. Yeah. I was going to say, it's definitely a theme. I think a lot of people can connect with, especially in the current times. Well, yeah, it's like $6 for an egg now. <laughs> so, uh, you know, with inflation and the funny thing about inflation is it really kind of shows you how the value of money is so kind of fluid. And it's actually money it used to be a representation of gold, right? We used to be backed by the gold standard. Now we're backed by nothing. So it's really just an imaginary play money. And for people to base their whole lives on this imaginary thing, you know, it's, it's just kind of, it's silly because really like you should feel like, like you're expressed through your art and you should feel like art has value. Yeah, it's crazy now. You can work a 40-hour job and it's still not be enough to, you know, pay the bills or cover everything. And no artists are having trouble touring and performing because of financial expenses. It's wild. Yeah, it's hard being a musician. And that's, that's another thing, like, we wanted to touch on is that as a musician, so many of us 
have had to juggle these corporate jobs that are really boring that we don't really care about. And then we've had, you know, you, you were like a whatever office person by day and then by night you're a real rock star. So that's kind of what we were touching on a little bit with those office scenes in the video. Like we're kind of making fun of these boring office environments that we've all have. Everyone's been stuck in a nine to five job that they don't like, whether you're a musician or not. You know, every it's kind of a part of the system. It's like, you got to get a job, otherwise you're, not, you're, you're worthless, you know? But so many of these jobs are not creative. They're not creatively fulfilling. They're not teaching you to be a leader or to, or to be a problem solver. They're teaching you how to just follow along to a playbook. And I think even in school, like even in, when you're growing up in school, they're not teaching you how to invest your money in stocks or how to like start a business or how to like be an entrepreneur. They're teaching you how to be, a, you know, be kind of a corporate slave and, and work for someone else. So I feel like there's a whole system at play that's kind of breeding these people to have these lives where they're just working these jobs that they're not happy with. And that's kind of what we were touching on with, the, with this song. Um, you know? yeah. I was going to add, you know, another thing with like school is, you know, a lot of people forget like the importance of community. like. What's so interesting about, you know, teaching and being a musician is like you have to connect to people and like express emotions and, uh, you know, if you're start, stuck in the corporate system, we devalue like connectivity, like during the pandemic without movies, like what would people be doing when we were during the lockdown, like art was like one primary form of like things to do and like entertainment, like art is very important in our world and we're devaluing art right now with uh, movies and how we sell movies and how we sell music. So we're just in tough times of just digital distribution and uh, people who are very creative and who are saving people are actually struggling financially. So it's kind of like, how come we're devaluing uh, people who are putting out such amazing ph philosophical thoughts and messages? They're actually building the world. You know, so yeah, know like as artists, as artists, we're kind of like weaving the dreams of the culture. Exactly. Yeah, it's not it's not just about this anti-capitalist message. We're expressing the idea that like you can uh, find fulfillment in these things without it being for monetary gain or for money. Yeah, like these these songs that we make and the art that we make is so much more important to us than than these corporate jobs that we've had. I had the jobs, you know, I've worked as a video editor doing big time TV shows and stuff, but it was ultimately the touring and meeting the fans and performing in front of people that gave me fulfillment. And uh, playing live, I see you've done a couple shows recently and uh, do you have some more coming up? Yes, uh, it's been really exciting to get back out on stage. We did do a few shows recently. We have a big show coming up uh, this Saturday. We're performing at Drag House. It's uh, kind of an underground after hours BDSM goth club here in LA. It's kind of a surprise performance. But the big show that we have coming up is actually at the Whiskey A Go Go on March 24th. We're opening for Orgy. And Orgy's album Candy Ass was a huge influence on me growing up. So this is very exciting uh, to be able to open for Orgy. And I actually met Jay Gordon, the singer, outside the whiskey. And he's the one that told me about the show and got me on the show. So uh, we're really excited to open for Orgy. Yeah, it seems like you're getting back to kind of your level that you were out before you were in L.A. when you were touring with like some of the bigger acts in the industrial genre, like Ministry and, and when you went through times like that. Yeah, I think God Bombs is definitely on a big resurgence right now. I mean, we did open for ministry back in 2018. And then there was a lot, whole lineup change and the pandemic and everything. So now it's coming out of that and like a really strong new single and a really strong new video and just a really great band that we have here in LA now. And I'm just really excited for the future of this project. I think it's really um, going to blow up in the next year or two. Yeah, yeah, I can tell with the do a uh, single and video that you guys are setting the bar higher now. I want to touch on, I saw online you said you were over 90 days sober. Has that helped you focus a little more too? You know, uh, that it has been an, a huge part of, of this, I will say. I had, re I had been sober prior, but I had relapsed for the past year and a half. 
And I was joking that that simulation was kind of my stoner album because it was very experimental. It was like a lot of like reverb and delay and distortion and stuff. And I like it. It's very artistic. But I think it was kind of a reflection that I was a bit lost at, in that era. And for me, getting sober, like kind of reclaiming my power and just getting clear again. And it really, it's, it's, it's very emotional for me to know that like a lot of people are saying this is the best video that I've ever done. And then it came out of a place where I got sober and uh, we were all just really laser focused on the goal. And we had a great team of people and, um, you know, it just the sobriety provides the clarity and the foundation to be able to really put myself completely into the art and not be distracted by constantly having to get high. Um, and, you know, it's just I'm really grateful. Yeah. Now, if people want to uh, look you up online, on social media, get your music, how do they do that? It's just the God Bombs. You search the God Bombs, you'll find us uh, at the God Bombs on Instagram. The Godbombs.com is our official website. It has the merchandise on there. Uh, Twitter is the only one where it's not the God Bombs, but everything else, Spotify, YouTube, you just search the God Bombs and you will find the official God Bombs channel. And TikTok, it's a O, oh, like a zero. On so. TikTok, it's, yeah, the God Bombs with a zero. <laughs> And when are you uh, planning on releasing the uh, next album? Do you have an idea? There's no date set for the album. We're currently working on a bunch of songs, one of which will be the next single. We're not really sure yet. All the material that we've been working on has been so strong. And we're just trying to narrow down like, OK, this is going to be the next one. There is a song called UFOs that may end up being the next single. I know Jason Kaplan expressed uh, a desire to do a music video that was like alien themed. So that's something that uh, I've been working on. And then myself and Anya worked on that song uh, yesterday, actually. Uh, Anya ad added vocals to it. So that may be the next single. But there's another, uh, another song called The Holiest of the Holies that's very strong. And uh, we just wrote a new song today that was amazing. So there's so much coming out. There's also another song called Bipolarity that I did with West. Yeah, that was pretty close to finish. I'd say we have like what, like eight or nine tracks, maybe. Yeah, we're closing in on on. It's gonna be a ten song album, and we're just gonna you know close in on the the final ones and just you know decide what's gonna make the album. And so we'll we'll have to decide what the next single will be. But I think we're in a really good place, knowing that we have such strong material to pick from. Yeah, sounds like a lot of exciting things happening, and I, I look forward to seeing what you guys are coming up in the future. It's great talking with you. Everybody look them up. Nice to meet you. Thank you. Thanks so much. Awesome. Man.